Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. This week we're aiming at fringe slash high power. Before starting, we want to tell you that if you're looking to spice up your decks, you should support Ventrocraft and his handmade custom foil altars. Check out the link below, they're gorgeous. This week we are playing. The vid is on Spleenface's Muldrotha. Bal's playing Zero's Tyam. Luis is on Cobblepot's Fair Junk featuring Timna and Kodama. And Cicada is on his Tax Brew for Atraxa. The vid will be starting us off this week. He was forced to mulligan down a 6 and kept a risky ish hand with only an island and Mystic Remora to get him out of there. He has a Birds of Paradise at the ready as soon as he finds the missing re mana, and then he can perhaps consider taking everyone's hands out with Narset Parter of Veils plus Windfall, or just use the latter to recover. Counterspell could prove invaluable along the way, while Razakath was sent straight to the bottom of his library. Bal's hand is more on the proactive side, with Bayou, City of Wrath, and Branchloft Pathway for lands. Sylvan Library allows him to start digging through his deck, Null Rod deals with the rest of the table's artifact ramp, Imp's Mischief can be used for protection or to dictate how a bit of interaction will go, and finally Wax Wayne is a narrow but cheap way to interact with enchantments. Luis, akin to David, also had to mulligan down a 6. He kept Twilight Mire, Bloodstained Mire, and Arid Mesa for lands, having Weather Wayfarer as a way to dig for more. Allosaurus Shepherd can help him protect his wind cons and disruptive green cards from counter magic, while Living Plane is half of his combo to lock the table down. Rule of Law is always good for fairer turns, unless you have a Kodama breaking parody. He sent Bloodstained Mire to the bottom. Finally, Cicada Mulligan wants and chose to keep his second hand due to its mild disruptive game plan. He has a Polluted Delta, Scrubland, and City of Wrath for lands, with Lanor Elves aiding in pushing his turn too. From there, he can consider either Narset to disrupt the Timna player or Trini Sphere if somehow there's no creatures on Luisa's board up until that moment. Abrupt Decay is a well rounded bit of interaction. A lot of Staxi decks this match, how will they perform? David starts us up with an island into a Mystic Remora, hoping to recover from his horrible hand. The rest of the table promises not to make it easy for him. Bal plays a Bountiful Promenade and passes. Luis plays and cracks an Arid Mesa for a Scrubland, and follows that with a Weather Wayfarer to dig deep into his utility lands. Finally, Cicada plays and cracks a Polluted Delta for a Tropical Island to ramp up with Lanor Elves. He passes. David pays for his Parch Remora, but fails to find the land he so desperately needs. He is forced to pass. Bal's top deck changes his line of play. He drops a Bayou, followed by a Carpet of Flowers while letting David draw. Bal then goes to his second main and adds green with the carpet. This allows him to cast a Sylvan Library, whilst giving David a chance to maybe catch up. Meanwhile, David is off-camera looking at his draws with bulging eyes. Luis activates the Wayfarer after drawing. He considers his options and settles for an ancient tomb. His indecisiveness shows, however, as he ends up playing a forest and passing. Or maybe he really wants that green for some instant. Cicada draws and plays a City of Brass. Afterwards, Narset part of Veils is dropped, allowing David to draw from Remora whilst attempting to cut the card advantage from Bal's library and Luis's Timna. He passes without activating the Narset because he is not sure he will be able to defend his walker yet. David is forced to let Remora go as he cannot pay for the stacks. Still, it fished for 3 cards at the cost of 2 mana, so all's good. Unfortunately for him, the only land he drew was a Gaius Cradle, which he plays. David goes to clean up and discards an Arbor Elf and a Pernicious Deed, the latter being pretty scary even in his graveyard. Bal can only draw one from library. He plays and cracks a Bloodstained Mire for a Scrubland, and then casts Tyam with help from the carpet to try and pressure the Narset. Luis starts his upkeep by complaining about getting flooded, so he activates the Wayfarer in his upkeep to slim down the odds of drawing lands. He gets a Gaius Cradle of his own, which he plays after the draw step. He decides to skip on adding pressure to the board for now, passing instead. Skater draws and decides to tick down Narset, trying to find something playable. There are a bunch of hard choices, and thus he decides to stick to Smothering Tithe. He plays a Scrubland and, after some thinking, decides to protect his Narset by casting Atraxa, rather than go for the Smothering Tithe. 
David, who was prepared to counter the tithe since he wants to cast Windfall ASAP and get out of his situation, sees another potential barrier to this play, Sicarius Commander. And so he chooses to cast Force of Will on Atraxa, pitching a regular counterspell to it. David's unfortunate streak continues as he does not find a land. He is forced to pass. Mal can't get to combat fast enough, swinging Tyam at Narset on his turn, so he finally gets to unlock his Sylvan library. On his second main, he gets one green from his carpet and casts a Findorn Elves, which enters with a Vigilance counter. He plays a Branchloft Pathway and then decides to preemptively cut access to Skater's Smothering Tithe by casting a Null Rod, since David wouldn't be able to pay for it. Luis draws and then activates Wayfarer for a Phyrexian Tower. He casts a discounted Okam Adversary and plays a tapped Overgone Tomb before passing, ready to start drawing cards like crazy. On his turn, Skater plays a Mystic Remora and then shocks himself for an Overgrown Tomb and casts Smothering Tithes regardless of Null Rod. The table reminds him of Null Rod and he shrugs since his options are limited, but one of them includes Rod Removal. David draws and Cicada asks the famed question, do you pay the two? David can't and Cicada gets a treasure. For the sake of this game, we will not be referring to the tithe triggers anymore, because no one will pay for it unless Cicada manages to deal with the rod. David is still on his two lander turn, passing. Bal is now able to resolve the library. He pays for life to take an extra card. He plays a City of Brass and attacks Cicada with both creatures due to Luisa's untapped Okane passing after that. Luis plays Timna followed by a Twilight Mire. He then casts a Chalice of the Void for two, triggering Remora. The fish banks on a draw and then he also swings at Cicada with Okame and Wayfarer at the vid. He draws one from Okame and then pays two life for the Timna trigger to get two more cards. It's a card advantage fiesta. He goes to clean up and discards two lands to hand size, complaining about the flood season. Cicada's Remora gets paid for. He then plays a Tundra and goes the full dirtle as he casts an Oko Thief of Crowns, upticking him and targeting the Chalice to transform it into an Elk. He then casts Abrupt Decay, which he could've used on the Null Rod over Chalice, but Cicada thought the Chalice stopped the cast, very much like Santum Prelate. The stars align as Bal responds with an Imp's Mischief, triggering Remora. After some discussion, Bal changes the target to Timna since Oko is reachable through combat and Luis just drew three cards. David draws and slam dunks his top deck breeding pool, merely paying two life for it to enter and tap. He casts a Lanor Elves, getting his cradle online. He follows that with a Birds of Paradise. In his end step, Bal casts a Vampiric Tutor, netting Cicada another draw. After some pondering, he decides to get a Dranith Magistrate since he's missing pieces to combo off. Still in his end step, he casts an Aven Mind Sensor, which also enters with a Vigilance Counter. We have a repeat of the last library as Bal draws an extra card with it. He then chooses to produce two white mana from his carpet and then plays and cracks a prismatic vista for a swamp. He casts Dranith Magistrate, his third creature with a vigilance counter, and swings everything at Oko, taking him out. Luis starts his own turn by swinging at Bal with his Okane, drawing a card. On his second main, he gambles on Wayfarer but fails to find a land on his top four. Luis moves to brighter pastures as he casts Bloom Tender and then plays a nurturing peatland. He finishes his turn with Elves of Deep Shadow. All the ramp. Cicada still pays for Remora, but passes the turn since there's no viable place for him at this point in the game as the stacks accumulates. David casts a Deathrite Shaman, continuing his ramping streak. He then casts his own Thief of Crowns, letting Cicada draw from Remora. Oko does his thing and time is targeted to go from Nightmare Beast to Elk. Bal responds by activating his commander, removing the Vigilance counters from his three creatures, not getting anything particularly good. He chooses to get a Prismatic Vista to help with the top three from Sylvan Library. Tyan's Metamorphosis goes through. On his turn, Bal keeps punishing himself with the library, paying four for an extra draw. He attacks Oko only with Aven Mind Sensor, as he wants Luigi to take on the mantle of dealing with the Thief of Crowns so that he doesn't get to draw too much with Timna instead. On his second main, he gets two white from Carpet and casts a Ranger Captain of Eos. In response to its ETB, Luis responds with an Opposition Agent to put a lid on that plan. Bal responds by cracking his Prismatic Vista for a forest. 
the Ranger Captain's trigger is a May, so Bal chooses not to search on the trigger resolution. As a true Timna player, Luis rejoices as he gets to go to combat. He swings at Oko with the Agent and the Elk Chalice, while Okame goes to Cicada, who has no blockers. He draws one and David decides his dorks matter more than Oko, so his planeswalker dies. On his second main, Luis casts a Daphne Silence, paying for the Remora. Tons of mana, as said, and sacrifices nurturing peatland. Luis is trying to dig deep and avoid those lands that keep finding their way into his hand. He plays a Reflecting Pool before passing. Cicada pays for Remora yet again, now having a plan but lacking the mana for it. He plays a Plains and then passes. David starts his turn by considering his options, namely Windfall. However, with Deafening Silence, that option doesn't seem incredible, so instead he casts a Ristic Study, feeding Cicada's fish. Bal catches up with his life total and decides to only net one with the library. He attacks Luigi with Mind Sensor and, on his second main, adds double green with Carpet before casting his own Okame Adversary. On his end step, Luigi activates his Wayfarer, looking at the top four and... he does manage to find a Verdant Catacombs. Which means he might need another successful gamble into that Mind Sensor if he drops the fetch. Despite his efforts of thinning the deck, Luigi manages to draw yet another land. He now swings Okame at the vid and, with the draw trigger on the stack, activates the Wayfarer again. He fights a Swamp on the top 4, ironically failing to tap the Wayfarer even though this does not matter too much. Luis then draws from the Adversary. He reveals how good his draw was compared to the last few as he casts a Tender Shoot Dryad, paying for Ristic and getting the Seeding's Blessing. The game might not be decided by some good old pummeling. Luis plays a Swamp and discards the Catacombs to hand size. On Sekir's upkeep, Luis gets a Sapling token while the Remora is sent back to the sea. For convenience, we will also not be narrating the Sapling token triggers. Sekir moves to his only slim hope of salvaging the game as he casts an overloaded Cyclonic Rift, not being able to pay the one. Bal weighs Luis's board potential versus Sekir's hidden hand and chooses the devil he knows by sacrificing the Ranger Captain of Eos to prevent Cicada from maybe doing too much due to his treasures. David then activates Deathrite Shaman, exiling the Captain and gaining 2 life while floating blue-green with the Dorks. Bal floats green and Luis floats Abzan with Bloom Tender. The board is now cleared and Cicada casts his Atraxa first, he then tries to move to combat so that the floating mana is cleared and the tricks are revealed. Bal casts Even Mind Sensor and Luis casts a Position Agent once again. On his second main, Cicada casts Derevi, tapping the Opposition Agent, and then casts to cattle on the guard. On his end step, Bal casts Nature's Claim on the Smothering Tithe, as the Null Rod might not stick. Cicada questions Bal on that thought because of Ristic Study after a Rift, but Bal has that cover too, so the claim resolves. David starts his turn by casting a Birds of Paradise and dropping Command Beacon. He then recasts Ristic Study. On his end step, Bal casts Wayne on the Ristic while paying for it. Wayne thankfully resolves, and we're now on Bal's turn. Bal starts his turn with a Carpet of Flowers and then casts No Rod to stop any possible interaction from Cicada. He has none, so we move to Bal casting Sylvan Library. He goes to his second main, adding Double White from the Carpet to cast Dranith Magistrate, and then casts Okim Adversary before passing. Luis starts unloading his own hand with Elves of Deep Shadow into Okem Adversary followed by a top-decked Collector Oof to lock those treasures even tighter. He plays a Chalice for zero and tops that off with Deafening Silence. He plays a Phyrexian Tower and finishes with the Tender Shoot Dryad so we're now back to dying to the board as David can cast Moldrotha and Sekera's remaining Wrath in the deck is Cataclysm, which seems not ideal for Tender Shoot. Luis discards Urborg to hand size. Cicada starts his turn with a Garruk Wildspeaker, hoping to pull Agro onto it. He then swings to Cattle and the Elves at David and Atraxa and the Revi at Luis, trying his best to trim down the life total on the player who has been ahead the entire match. This triggers the Revi four times, although he loses the trigger as he untaps only three lands. On his second main, he creates a Beast with Garruk and goes to End Step, triggering Atraxa to proliferate Garruk. David starts his turn dropping an unlucky Flooded Strand, which he does not activate due to both Agent and Mind Sensor. 
he casts Deathrite Shaman in Lenor Elves and goes to his end step. Sakeda casts an Impulse, looking for interaction while being only at one non-creature spell per turn. Baal's library draws him only one, as Luis's board state is looking deadlier each turn. He attacks David with Oakham to draw another card. On his second main, he adds double white with the carpet and casts his commander, followed by a Findorn Elves, a Lenor Elves, and a Dangerous Dark Confident, all entering with Vigilance counters. In his end step, Sketa keeps trying to salvage the table by casting Veil of Summer, drawing one. Luis starts his turn by going to combat and swings all three saplings at Baal and Oakham at David, not keen on trading with Sketa just yet. With the increasing pressure, Baal chumps one of the three threes with the Dranith unlocking Muldrotha to help out the board with the pernicious deed. Luis draws from Grob and then plays Sun Petal Grove. Luis casts Kodama, partially because of reach to reduce flying pressure, partially because we forgot to cattle Honor Guard stops creatures from triggering Kodama due to board clutter. Luis drops his second commander, Timna, and puts a rule of law on the field. We do notice this later, but Luis had all the mana in the world, so it didn't matter that much. Skeda starts his turn dropping a command tower and down takes Garuk for another beast. He then casts a Tezzeret the Seeker, which could be a way out with his ultimate transforming the 15 treasures into 5-5s. Five he upticks it and then attacks David with Atraxa and the Revi to tap Luis's Kodama and untap his command tower so we can try to pressure Luis with flyers. On his end step, David casts Winds of Rebuke on the Rule of Law and everyone mills too. Luis opens the social stack to Groan as he watches two of his Hansers to win get milled out. Ironically, both fetchable has he had in Lighted Tutor in his hand. It's David's turn and, after some discussion, it's obvious that the game either ends with Luis's saplings or 75 damage from treasures unless something is done. And so David casts Muldrotha, exiling a non-fetch from Baal's graveyard. He then casts Pernicious Deed from the graveyard. Baal reveals an Enlightened Tutor with Dark Confident. However, he's stuck with tutoring only from the top of his library, so he draws and plays an Utopia Sprawl on his forest, naming Black and passing the turn. On his end step, Luis ponders if he can force David to sacrifice the Pernicious Deed with Ass Trophy, so he doesn't lose an attack to it, but decides not to waste the instant. He gets to his turn and draws yet another land. More than half of his lands were drawn or fetched this game. He does some math and goes to combat, swinging Kodama, Oakham and the Sapperlings at the vid to also pressure his life total and avoid pernicious deed loops. The vid cracks the pernicious deed for zero and takes hate damage, destroying all of Scare's treasures and the Sapperlings. Luis draws from Grob and pays one life to draw from Timna. He then casts Linvala and Bal responds by activating Tyam, milling a bunch of tutors and a Phyrexian tower which he brings to the field. This was the moment we noticed Kodama could not trigger because of Tukatl, so Luis is forced to hard cast his other combo piece, Living Plane. This combo makes every land into a creature and since creatures cannot tap for mana because of Linvala, nobody is able to produce mana from lands. Thanks to Collector Oof, artifacts also cannot tap for mana. This effectively locks the board. Unfortunately, it resolves, and after some discussion, including how Garu could maybe super pump Sekiro's board in one turn cycle but might still not suffice, we scoop it up as our other out was Baal hitting a sword's plowshares to cast with his carpet, to which Luis reveals he had the Ass Trophy and his own nature's plane. Good game. Thank you for joining us for today's matches, everyone. Two weeks in a row where hate and stacks took the win, this time spearheaded by Luis. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons and especially Izanagi, Stefan, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Eagleagle, Drunken Housecat, Uncrustable, Cosmic Astro, V, RJ, and Starfall, our stack breakers. If you want to go through other Commander Adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Come with us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then.